Did you just sign up for your first 5k half marathon, maybe full marathon, and you have no idea how to train for it? Well, I just ran my first half marathon this year, so maybe if you're running a full marathon, click out of this video, but if you're just trying to get into long distance running, I have 10 tips for you guys on how you can improve your long distance running training. Hi guys, my name is Jenna, if you guys are new here, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a video talking about my tips for long distance running. I am so excited to film this video. It's been very long awaited. If you've been watching my vlogs, then you know that I've had this whole journey this year of learning to love running. I ran my very first race this year, which was actually a 10 miler. And then I just recently ran my very first half marathon. And I have some tips that I have for you guys. 10 tips for long distance running. I am so excited because I'm not a trainer and I think that in some ways like I'm less qualified I'd, I'd say to give like any type of actual training advice but these are really just tips that I would often remind myself when I was training for my half marathon and I thought it would be really fun to give you guys this video as just like someone who's a normal person who enjoys working out and wanted to challenge myself this year run the longest I've ever run in my life and now I feel like my life has kind of changed because I've fallen in love with running so I will break everything up of course but if you guys want to see my 10 tips including my running essentials then let's just go ahead and get started I'm just gonna say for the purposes of this video the only clips I'm gonna include aside from the tips are just clips of me running just because I have so many vertical clips horizontal clips I'm just gonna show all clips throughout this video of me running as I give these tips so that it can be more fun for you guys just just so you know just putting it out there first I'm just gonna go through with you like my context of like who I am as an athlete or somebody who works out I have always enjoyed long distance running. I actually ran cross country as like my extracurricular activity starting in middle school. As soon as I was around 13 years old, I was already running like two to three miles and I'm just not a coordinated person. I'm never really someone that enjoyed sports outside of like golf and tennis. Those were the only coordinated related sports that I actually enjoyed or was even good at. But something about running, just releasing those endorphins and having it be both an individual sport, but also something you could do with friends was just like so perfect for me. So I really fell in love with running when I was really, really young. I ran cross country all through high school and then I kind of stopped because I didn't really want to run long distances in college. It just wasn't a priority of mine. I would run here and there with my boyfriend in college and he was actually a professional athlete. So when he was training in Utah at the Olympic Oval, I would just go and run around the track as he was doing his training. But yeah, I feel like running is just kind of something that I can do anywhere and I've always really enjoyed it. And so I didn't really run in college. I just like would run here and there. I would say my normal like running thing was three miles. And then after college, I started doing Orange Theory, really enjoyed that. The pandemic happened. I was doing a lot of at-home workouts. And then after the pandemic kind of ended, I was going back to the gym and lifting, signed back up for Orange Theory, was doing a lot of long walks. And now here I am doing long distance running again. So I would just, I say all of this to say that I'm already like a pretty active person. I usually consider like a normal workout week four to five times for me. And I think I've kind of grown a strong base endurance for myself because I started long distance running when I was really young and kind of maintained it through high school, a little bit in college, and then started doing Orange Theory and training my heart again in post-grad. And the last thing I'll say is that I've just really enjoyed exercising in general because I feel like it's a really good release of energy that's good for my physical health, my mental health, and my personal health. My usual run is around like three to four miles. Just for anyone that's like curious, that's what I've always kind of considered like a normal run for me. So in terms of pace and like how fast I am, I wouldn't say I'm slow, but I wouldn't say I'm fast either. I feel like I'm just kind of right in the middle. When I ran my half marathon, I had around, I think an 8.45 pace throughout the whole entire run. And then I think I actually had the same exact pace for the Cherry Blossom 10 miler. And I think the fastest mile I've ever done, which granted was on a treadmill. So I think it was a little, a little bit guided was like a little bit under seven minutes. Take that as you will. I don't think I'm like a professional athlete or anything, but yeah, I think that's everything for like giving context about like my fitness journey, my background, my like how I got started with running in general and okay. Tips time. I wrote all these tips down on my notebook because I really wanted to think about this throughout the month. I've been thinking about these tips all month. And so these are the 10 tips that I have for you guys. Number one, focus on running for periods of time before distance. And I know that's really, really hard to do because I think that people get really, and myself as well, just get really stuck on. I want to run five miles, four miles, seven miles, 10 miles. But when it comes to training your heart or training 
to run for a half marathon, for example, or like a race if you have that as a goal. I was actually given some advice from my Orange Theory coach who ran the half marathon with me and she really helped reframe my whole entire mindset on running long distances because she said that my body will remember how long I ran time-wise, not distance-wise. So I could run seven miles really, really fast, but if I'm training to run a race for a certain mileage at a certain day, then training my body via time, via like running for 45 minutes, tracking your heart rate, running for 60 minutes, running for 30 minutes, whatever it is, your body will remember how much time you spend exerting that energy versus, okay, my body remembers this is what seven miles is and I'm gonna do that again. So, and I thought that it was just a really interesting way to look at it. I think you could look at it either way, honestly, like if you know what five miles is for you and that's what your body is used to, then like that's totally fine. But just a tip that I had for myself and a tip that I was even given from an Orange Theory coach who's a certified personal trainer was that your body will remember the time spent, not so much the distance you've run. All that to say, tip number two, is when you're training run whatever your slow pace is run a jog and that should really mean if you have an apple watch or fitbit or a device that will track your pace or your heart rate your heart rate should be in zone two throughout the whole entire run for as long as possible and zone two means basically a jog it means you could have a conversation with somebody throughout your entire run and I did not realize that that was like a big part of training for like longer distances or a race because I would always think I just need to run as fast as possible and it's going to be so painful and I'm going to hate it and then it'll be done and it'll be over and I'm just going to do it all over again next time. But my Orange Theory coach, the same one that told me that my body knows time, not distance, she told me that training my heart was just as important as training my legs and my body. So running slow for 60 minutes, maybe that would take you six miles for example but if you think you could run faster you're just training yourself for that big day that's led by adrenaline led by all the training that you've done that running slow throughout your training process one will help grow the strength of your heart but also two you will just enjoy running so much more like so 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 much more you will enjoy your run because you're just not in that much pain as if you're huffing and puffing for that one mile and you have to do that like six more times but if you're in zone two you could basically have a conversation with somebody. What I like to do, I have another tip for that, which is tip number three, but I'm trying to say, is there anything else I wanna talk about with like running slow? I just wanna give an example. I would say that my like race pace, my ideal race pace was around nine minutes. I really wanted to run an average mile for my 13.1 miles at a nine minute pace. My coach told me that if I wanna do that, leading up to that race for a month or two prior as I'm training for it, my long runs should be in zone two and they should be at like a 10 minute 50 pace. So I hope that gives more context on like what the difference in heart rate and slow running should be like because you are training just because you're running what your version of slow is doesn't mean you're not training. You are still very much training and you're preparing your body for that big day or you're just enjoying a long run and it's just a lot more pleasant when you're not running so fast and you're not in so much pain. Tip number three. All of these tips are just a part of one big story, but tip number three is that something that really helped me learn to run slow and learn to like enjoy actually running those long distances during my training was listening to podcasts on not 1.5 speed, but one speed or maximum 1.2 speed. Listen to a long podcast, listen to an audiobook. I'm for some reason, I just can't get into audiobooks yet. I don't know why I think I just haven't like pulled the trigger on it but I love listening to podcasts during my long runs be because I often run by myself for a bunch of reasons which I'll go into later but listening to podcasts on a normal speed or like 1.2 speed just really helps you kind of get into the rhythm of running that slower conversational pace versus listening to like 160 beats per minute songs over and over again where you naturally want to run faster. If you're running a long distance that day and you wanna run slow just for like a certain period of time, like let's say an hour or 45 minutes, listen to a podcast and just like hang out with somebody. It's so much more fun to run and you will naturally run slower. You'll just have a really good time in general listening to whatever podcast you listen to. I'm gonna put a whole list right here of all the podcasts podcast that I enjoy listening to. It's just a really fun way because a lot of the creators that I like have personal podcasts. So I feel like I'm hanging out with a friend and it's just a really good use of my slow long runs in preparation for my training. So that is tip number three. Tip number four, mix strength training slash hit with your runs during your workout week. And this kind of goes hand in hand with like having a plan of what your workout week is. 
I personally, to be honest, am not someone that followed like a specific training plan. I wasn't, I looked it up a bunch of times. It was like run three miles, four miles, five miles this week, run blah, 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 X, Y, Z miles the next week. And for some reason it just, that type of structure just didn't work for me, which is really weird because I'm a really big planner. But I would say lightly, I would just tell myself, look, if I can just do, let's say a normal workout week is four to five times giving two to three days to fully rest your body, your workout week should, for me, this is what I would tell myself, one shorter run, so in between three and five miles, or maybe if you're really in the beginning of your training, one to three miles, one long run, which is usually towards the end of the week and definitely the day before a rest day is like your really, really long run. For me, that was usually in between six or 10 miles. And then two times of Orange Theory. I love Orange Theory so much because it's just the perfect thing for endurance training, strength training, and power training. Going to Orange Theory classes just gives you a mix of all of those things that I genuinely feel like I was able to train for my half marathon without having a training schedule because going to Orange Theory gave me that like high intensity, sprinting, lifting, burpees and stuff. That stuff really helps in the long run in your preparation for race day. Or if you're just training in general, not just for a race, but I feel like if you clicked on this video, maybe you are. I think it's just a really good change also in the pace of your workout week because when you're running like five to six times a week, unless you're truly, truly in love with it and that's all you wanna do, I think it could get kind of boring just running all the time. So breaking up your runs with hit slash strength training. You could also just like get a really good lift in if you don't go to Orange Theory, but I love Orange Theory. I think it helped a lot during my training for my half marathon. And I genuinely think that strength training slash hit is what helped me get faster if that is something that you're interested in. So that's four times during the week. And if my body felt good enough, like if I felt like my long run wasn't too taxing or I hadn't run my long run yet, then I would do one medium distance run or like medium timed run. So if a shorter run is around three to five miles for me, that's usually 30 to 40 minutes. And my longer run is 45 minutes plus, then I would just kind of do something in the middle, depending on what that long run and short run is that week. Or you can just do a longer time of your short distance range if that makes sense i'll put this all on the screen too so that i'm not rambling and i feel like i'm not really explaining myself well but basically one shorter time one longer time or distance two times orange theory slash hit slash strength training and then if possible if your body feels good enough one like medium sized run got it Tip number five, you need to decide for yourself what the optimal time is for you to run. And I'm not talking about like morning routine, night routine or anything, but I do think it's important for just you to know in yourself, like when is the best time that you can get a run in? For me, running or working out is literally the only definition of having my morning routine because I do work nine to five and I do create content usually after work. My morning is like the only time in my day that I know I can get a workout in that I don't always have to rush because a workout more or less could take anywhere between one hour to two hours beginning to end with preparing, actually working out, showering, and then getting ready for your day. I just can guarantee that time so much more during the morning before everything starts versus like trying to fit it in with everything that is already going about my day. But if you are just an afternoon type of workout person, then I think that's totally fine. I would only say that don't do your like really long distance run at night just because like you're not going to be able to fall asleep. So that's why I would kind of encourage you guys to create a morning routine of working out in the morning. But if not, just kind of define for yourself what your optimal time is to run just so that you kind of know where it will fit in with your day. This is kind of related, but for me, I like working out in the morning just because I usually run on an empty stomach. I'm just the type of person that if I run after I've already had like multiple meals, like if I run in the afternoon, I will most likely just not feel good. I'll feel like I wanna throw up. And I just don't like feeling like that. So I usually run on like a lighter stomach. If I have anything before I run, it's usually just like a piece of toast to get me going or like a piece of toast with peanut butter and banana if I'm doing my long run that day. But I just like running in the morning because it just fits in with everything, with like my work life, with like my diet or what I eat. And I really like that a lot. Yeah, I just wanted to speak about like eating before my runs because I think not everyone does it. And I think it's really just a personal preference, but I usually just don't really like to eat that much before I run. 
Tip number six, be mentally prepared to change your lifestyle. If you have signed up for a long distance race or if you wanna fall in love with running, then I think a really important tip that I had to tell myself was that my lifestyle had to change. If I, if I really wanted to add this new hobby or time spent in my life, then I would have to fit it in with all the other ways that I spend my time in my life for me that really meant that i had to cut back a lot on alcohol and like going out late at night just because i know that my optimal time to run is during the morning time and if i go out the night before go to like a really crazy happy hour and then just stay out all night i'm not gonna get that run in and i've spoken about this a little bit on my vlogs i'll link below this particular vlog where i did talk about my low drinking lifestyle but my interest in running and training for a half marathon was definitely a huge factor of why i started adopting like a low drinking lifestyle i think it's definitely possible a part of the lifestyle of someone who runs a lot and who likes to do long distance running is that you really have to get enough sleep i have found that usually a run that i've defined as like a bad run or i just didn't feel good i didn't feel energized or like my body was hurting it was usually because i got less than seven hours of sleep that night there's no excuse to sleep less if i have to run a lot so that's definitely a huge shift in lifestyles too if i keep changing angles it's because my battery keeps dying i'm having an issue with my camera and my battery but anyways other ways that i feel like my lifestyle has changed since i started really loving running and long distance running is not just the low drinking and sleeping more running has become like my silent time and my alone time and i know i talked about like listening to audiobooks and stuff but it still feels like me time when i run and so that's why i really started enjoying the slow runs that last like an hour which end up being like six plus miles because that time is just time away from everyone time with myself and as an extrovert i'm really trying to learn how to enjoy time spent alone it has just been like so refreshing my lifestyle has changed so much because i really enjoy my alone time now through running I also feel like running is just a really good way for me to clear my head get my thoughts straight i don't do this often i'll admit but sometimes i'll run with like nothing in my head like no music no audiobook no podcast or anything but i'm just running simply listening to like the sounds of the world and allowing myself to think it's just really really refreshing and it gives me a lot of clarity a lot it feels like almost journaling in my head i guess all that to say is your life will change a lot if you start running a lot and if you're wanting to adopt long distance running you will have to just choose your lifestyle changes okay tip number seven these are tips about getting faster my only tip that i feel like i would do for myself i don't really worry too much about speed because i think in my standards i'm already like pretty fast because i just don't need to be faster but for anybody no matter where you are in your fitness journey if your goal one of your goals is to get faster with your pace is one the hit slash strength training i really think that helps a lot with speed and we like don't realize it and two monitoring what your heart rate is for a certain mileage just kind of keeping a journal or a log of what your heart rate was your average heart rate throughout let's say three miles what is your average heart rate if your heart rate is like always in zone three and four then you know you're kind of not ready to pick up the speed but if you're starting to over time like track your heart rate for a certain distance and you see it going down even just one beat per minute going down but if you see that downwards trend every single time you run then that means that your heart is growing and your endurance is growing and you're getting faster so yeah i would just kind of choose the days throughout your training weeks on if you are focusing on speed you can do like intervals you can do but i do think that just tracking your heart rate for a certain distance over time is a really good way like data or metric wise to see if you're getting faster tip number eight fueling your body it's so important you guys to eat enough when you're running like six seven miles if you're burning like nearly 500 plus calories during a workout you have to make sure you're eating enough and again that's why like my typical self i usually don't eat early in the morning just because i'm not that hungry and i feel like it makes me feel almost nauseous if i eat too early in the mornings but because i love running in the mornings i really started to adopt eating in the morning if i feel like i need to if i do actually feel hungry before i start running then i'll eat because i have to fuel my body for the run and after your run just like fueling yourself with a big nutritious balanced meal is so important i used to think that i would just run to burn off calories and then i should just do nothing about it but just feel like those calories were gone from all the calories that i ate that day but 
fueling your body for long distance running is so important because you can't run those long distances without giving yourself enough energy the only way to get energy is if you eat stuff no matter what i eat i'm running and i need to like take care of my body and prepare myself to run long distances so tip number nine stretching before and after your run is so so important and i could be better i'll admit about stretching before my runs but doing dynamic stretching before you run is so important because you're basically preparing your body to give it a hard time. Even if you're jogging, preparing your body to do something over and over and over again for like an hour, let's say, or even 30 minutes, 45 minutes, that is a lot of energy that you're exerting on your body. And it's honestly like a lot of, what's it called? Like resistance or strain that you're giving your body. So the best thing that you can do is do dynamic stretches. And all you have to do is just Google dynamic stretches for your before your run. I really like to do hip swings and butt kicks and like the you kind of like open your knees i don't know the names of all of these stretches but i will leave a link below for you guys to see what stretches to do before and after your run because there is certain types dynamic stretches are when you're about to exert a lot of energy on your body so you're kind of like preparing the muscles to be moving around a lot and then static stretching which is like sitting down not moving around basically you're moving around for your dynamic stretching and then after your run is when you're like sitting and stretching and doing the normal stretches you usually think of for stretching that's for after your run because that really helps with recovery so just being really, really mindful of giving your body as much care as possible because running long distances is not easy. All of these tips are really just ways for you to best take care of your body when you're doing something like long distance running. Also, I really like the massage gun. I do think it's actually really worth it because on those really long run days, if I had run like six plus miles, doing the massage gun all over like my thighs and especially my calves, it just feels so nice. And you can get that on Amazon. That's my first running essential actually, which is tip number 10 is just going through with you guys what my running essentials are. Those are all of my tips though. Okay, but all of that to say, let's go through my outdoor running essentials because I have them all here. <gasps> actually, no I don't. Okay. Running essentials, let's go through them. I don't have many, but these are things that like, I can't go a run without them. One, running belt. These things are so freaking nice, you guys. I don't like doing the armband, but I'm just someone that can't hold my phone during my run. Like I need to be in my like running form, which is, this is my running form. <laughs> That's why I really need a running belt. This is the best thing. There's so many different ways for you to not hold your phone when you're running. There's the armband, there's a running belt. There's like a vest even, I think. My favorite is the running belt because all you have to do, buckle it up. You have a pocket for your phone, you have a pocket for your keys, pocket for pepper spray, and it's just really, really nice. You can adjust how tight it is too. This is actually like the thing that made me think, okay, I can run for a long distance because I don't have to hold my phone for so long. So running belt is really important. Next, these are the headphones that I use when I do run. These are the Beats Fit Pro, I think. I just got these on Amazon. I used to have the AirPods Pro, but I had the first generation and I was having like static issues. But truthfully, I don't think that AirPods Pro would last over time for a long run. I just feel like they were always falling out of my ear and it was driving me crazy. I really like the Beats Pro because this little wing tip like fits in your ear. So I'm just gonna put it in my ear and show you guys. So you have this and then you put it in, you like your your ear these will literally never fall out of your ears ever and it's so nice so i really like the beats pro this is another thing that made me feel like okay i really can run long distances because my earphones aren't always like falling out of my ear so beats fit pro and they're cheaper visor i just recently got this this is from amazon i just looked up like running visor but i really like this one because it has an adjustable little like strap right here and it's not itchy i have this like really weird thing where i feel like hats just make my forehead itch but this is really really good for not itching and especially on really sunny days you want to protect your face and you don't want to be like squinting during your run i'm not somebody that likes running with glasses or like sunglasses so i just use a visor and it's like the best freaking thing ever so this was like ten dollars i think on amazon too and it's the best especially for the sunny runs. Next, compression socks. Okay, I don't know if these really make a difference, but there was one period in time before I had compression socks that I feel like I almost had like a stress fracture in my foot. I wasn't running any crazy distances yet. I think I, at that point I had only run like six miles throughout my half marathon training, which is 13.1. 
and I was like, I don't know what's going on with my foot. I didn't run for like a couple days because of it. And then I got compression socks on Amazon and I haven't had a problem since. So if anyone knows the science behind compression socks, let me know. But I actually do think these have made a difference and I would just actually recommend them because they've been really helpful. Next, we have cliff blocks or, okay, I haven't tried goo because it just seems like icky to me, but basically just anything that you can easily fit in your running belt for those long distance run, you need to maintain your energy during your run. Eating during your run is something that honestly, it's kind of fun. You eat during your run. Okay, these are ones that I got just at like a little fair before the Cherry Blossom 10 miler. These are Cliff Blocks and they're basically just pure carbs. And this one has a little bit of caffeine, but it's basically just to refuel your energy source. So you kind of feel refueled as you're running. And it's been really helpful, especially for those like long, long run distance days. But if you guys have other things that you eat during your run, I don't think like these don't taste bad. They're just like one huge gummy. But if you guys do run long distances and you have something that you really like, if it's like goo, or anything else that's not cliff blocks or goo, let me know in the comments because I'm really looking for other things that I could have. These just have a lot of sugar, which I know that when you're running is probably like not the worst thing in the world, but I'm just curious, like what do you guys eat on your runs? I don't have it with me. It's in my bathroom and I'm kind of lazy, but SPF, you guys have to wear SPF if you're running outside. No questions asked. Any SPF, SPF 30 minimum. Do not ever go outside running, walking, whatever without SPF. Lastly, this is my ideal running outfit. These are running shorts. These are from Lululemon, but honestly, just any running shorts like this, high-waisted, thick waistband, liner. And if you're someone that has a problem with chafing, then I would consider like biker shorts, but I just love running in shorts. I don't know why. These are really, really nice because my ideal running top is a long, tight-ish tank top like this. This is from Alphalete. I got it on sale. I tuck it into my shorts, put my running belt on top, and it's so comfortable. I love it. It's so, so, so comfortable. Nothing's loose and you can just kind of like do your run. But if you're not someone that likes a tight outfit like this, then I would do like biker shorts and just an oversized tee. Just wear a tank top or something underneath so that you can wear your running belt and you won't like give yourself a rug burn or anything because that's happened to me before. But that's why I like running in like tighter clothing just because it helps a lot with the running belt. But again, you can also just do biker shorts, an oversized tee or leggings and a big oversized tee. I love running in oversized tees and yeah that's the best okay well those are all of my tips i am delighted to finish this video because i've been wanting to make this video for weeks you guys and a lot of you guys have been saying if you've been watching my vlogs and you've been waiting for this video comment a running shoes emoji if you made it to the very end so that i know and I love you guys so much. I hope you guys really enjoyed these tips. If you have other tips for long distance running, leave them in the comments below and I'll see you guys very soon in a new video. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. I post new videos every Tuesdays and Fridays. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video, but until then, miss you already.